Terry Pratchett would have loved the nuns. I think he would have loved the casting. Look at the cast that, would, that we had. He would have loved the Madame Tracy sales. He would have loved the music. He would have loved the special effect. He would have enjoyed seeing his creation come to life. I'm Rob, and I worked with Terry for over 20 years, and it just so happens that now I run his literary estate and his TV and film estate. The first time I met Terry, he was doing a, a signing. There's uh, 150 people in front of me, there's probably three or 400 people behind me, and yet Terry gave you a couple of minutes. And the fans and the readers were so important to him. I had an idea for a novel, and I wrote something the length of a long, short story, and one of the friends I sent it to was Terry Pratchett. And one day the phone rang, and a voice said, hello, it's me. And he said, listen, I've been thinking about that thing you wrote. He said, are you doing anything with it? And I said, no, I'm, I'm really busy. He said, well, I know what happens next. So either you sell me the idea, or we can write it together. My first experience with Terry Pratchett was I, I did an adaptation of the amazing Maurice and his educated rodents, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. They are, you know, two of the biggest names there have ever been, really, in, in, in literature, and particularly in this kind of genre. I had been a fan of the book for many, many years. Neil's, as well as Terry's, both of their sense of humor kind of jibed really nicely to make this a really loving observation of how great we do have it on Earth. It's to say, you know, even with all the problems we have, it's, it, it's not so bad. Sandman was my introduction to Neil's work, and I loved that so much that when the book of Good Omens came out and I saw it was the same person, I got it, and I read it, and that was my introduction to Terry as well, and I loved the book, and it's been a favorite book of mine ever since. Terry and I, when we talked about Good Omens, and we talked about making it, all we wanted was a scene in a sushi restaurant. We wanted to be sitting, eating our sushi, while people were filming. Why do you consume that? You're an angel. It's sushi. Then, when we got to filming, I realized I couldn't do it. It was just too sad for me, that the idea that Terry and I weren't together, sitting in the background of the scene, scoffing the sushi. Terry, who was Terry? Who was your Terry? He was my best friend. I use the word very advisedly, but he was a flipping genius. Just finding beauty and being able to compress it down into a beautiful diamond and deliver it on the page, just so clever. His line to me when we were writing Good Omens, he would phone me up and he'd say, I've just done this and it's made it 17% funnier. <laughs> I'd written this whole meeting between the International Express Man and Pollution, and I'd mentioned that, you know, the, he and his wife went down there sometimes when they were courting uh, to spoon. And Terry added the line, And on one memorable occasion, fork. On one memorable on occasion. On one memorable occasion, <laughs> I'd made it 17% better. In fact, in that case, it may have made it 100% better. Terry, he'd written Agnes Nutter and the death of Agnes Nutter. Our then producers felt that we could save a lot of money by doing Agnes Nutter with the voice of a narrator and some woodcuts. I suddenly had a spectral Pratchett of course. looking over my shoulder, and I'd written that scene in the script going, I'm writing this for you. Thank the gods of film and TV that we have the burning of our witch. It's fabulous and, and a and very important scene for me. Good Omens, the novel, was a collaboration between two friends. The screenplay, Terry's gone, Terry's passed away. It's now been handed to you to do. And I did it for him. My task was incredibly simple. Make a TV series adaptation of Good Omens that Terry Pratchett would have enjoyed. That's a different kind of thing in your head to make this thing that everybody will love or make this thing that will get ratings or... And some of that stuff may happen and it may not, and I don't care because my job was to make a version of Good Omens that Terry asked me to make before he died. And I made it. And I think Terry really would have liked it. I think Terry's legacy is the gentle, sensible, incredibly articulate voice. Just the idea that as a person, you were your best self in the voice of the books. And he was. And what I love about that is the inspiration he gives to other people to be their best self. 
It's a pretty good legacy. It really is a good legacy. So I would like to propose a toast to one particular absent friend who should be here with us eating sushi and who could out-eat both of us. Indeed. Uh, Sir Terry Pratchett. Sir Terry Pratchett. Cheers. To the world. To the world. Thank <laughs> you.